Hello everybody, this is adding vectors together. In fact, we have four of them. It's usually towards the end of the first chapter of your introductory uh, course to physics. Uh, it's basically the culmination of, of um, well, it's to prove that you really understand about the resultant vector and how to add vectors together to use i hat and j hat or x hat and y hat depending on the professor. So the first thing, uh, yeah, let's get started. The um, the first thing is we need to determine the magnitude for the resultant and then the direction for the resultant as a positive counterclockwise angle from the positive x-axis. So we have four vectors and before we begin adding them we have to slide them over so that the so that the tail of the second is at the head of the first and um, it's also called the head to tail uh, fashion or head to foot uh, depending on what your uh, professor tells you or something else but you have to slide these vectors over now vectors show both magnitude and direction they both matter the direction of this b vector for example vector b uh, points up for a reason and it's this length because it specifically describes uh, 12.0 meters and that's all that matters with vectors if you slide the vectors now when I slid this vector pretend from here to here, did, did I change the direction? No. Did I change the size? No. So it's perfectly all right to uh, to slide vectors. So this is what I would do. This is my method, and it, it's it's um, it's what makes it easy for me to do this. So uh, first, start with the first vector, which is vector a. Always start with the first vector and just approximate. Now all this is not to scale, but just approximate uh, vector a right here. So this is uh, vector a. Uh, then you slide vector B over so what what would that look like it would look like this okay and then you slide vector C over and that would look like this of course just approximating and finally vector D you slide that over and you're left with this and also the angle measures are given and this is basically whoops uh, this is basically when you um, add all the vectors together and put them all together in a head-to-tail fashion. Now, what's the resultant? What does the resultant look like? Well, the resultant always, well, it's basically um, the displacement. How far are you from your origin to where you uh, left off at? So if this describes a journey that you took, that you hiked, you went this way for a certain amount of meters, then you went that way, then this way, and then that way. How far are you from the origin? So the resultant vector always uh, points from the origin to the to here, to where you um, finished at. And this is the resultant vector. And what we need to do is find the magnitude of the resultant. So we need to... Um, first find the components and this is what the components will act like will be like so this is the x component of vector r and the y component of vector r right here this creates a 90 degree angle and now you have your um, uh, theta right here but that's not the direction for the resultant uh, what you have to do is picture this on the x axis Okay, um, what you really have to do, and I, I messed this up on the first time I did this, and, and my physics teacher caught in, so now I know how to do it. You have to, now the direction is not just this, it's this plus 180 degrees. So essentially this entire angle is, will be the direction. It's not just this, it's not just theta, but it's theta plus 180 degrees. So we're looking for, uh, theta plus 180 degrees right up here. So now um, this is still part of our setup. Uh, let's uh, let us now um, write down a few things to uh, that we should have in our uh, memory because it's going to come up later on. Uh, the resultant vector equals the sum of the x component and the sum of the y component. The magnitude of vector r which could just be r depending on the teacher or your professor or your book um, is going to equal so the magnitude is basically how the distance in meters this is so you have 
rx squared plus ry squared all square roots so it's basically the pythagorean theorem x squared plus y squared equals r squared y just went ahead and square rooted both sides and that's what you get now how do we find the x component of vector r how do we do that and you know what there probably should be that okay how do we do that well rx is going to equal the sum of all the x components and r sub y is going to be the sum of all the y components together so now we have to individually find the components now this is my method and this is how I understand it what you do is draw a line right here and then again copy all the vectors but individually so here you have uh, vector A which is 16.0 uh, meters at a 20 degree angle you have vector B right here which is 12.0 meters you have vector C at a 35.0 degree angle relatively uh, speaking 13.0 uh, meters and then you have vector D at um, at 24 point zero meters and fifty uh, point zero degrees now uh, now individually draw all the components to them so you have the x component of vector x and the y component of vector y which should bring uh, which should give or produce a or yield a, um, a right triangle and then you have the x component of vector c added to the y component of vector c then you have uh, the x component of vector d and the y component of vector d and now you're you're ready to uh now you're now you're ready so that's the setup and you're ready to start solving this so you have the uh let's first find the x component uh the x component equals now notice that you have an angle and you have uh, a side length in this case the hypotenuse this is where you uh, use trigonometry uh, now from here on I've got to say that I have pre um, answered these questions so you could pause and do it on the calculator I would actually encourage you to practice that so um, anyway so the we're finding the x uh, component of vector a this is the uh, this is adjacent to the 20 degree angle and we already know the hypotenuse or r value well little r and uh, so we could use the cosine trig function so we could say that the cosine of 20 degrees uh, equals adjacent uh, which is a sub x over the hypotenuse which equals uh, which when you multiply both sides by 16 degrees it's going to be 16.0 uh, meters times cosine 20.0 degrees which is approximately 15.04 meters now I'm only going to do this part once because I'm going to show you you, you could just skip to this part is hypotenuse times the trig function times the degree um, so you could just skip to this part if you're if you're that practiced, but you could of course do this so you, it would prevent mistakes. So AX notice is actually going the negative direction. Keep that in mind. So it's going to be negative. And now onto A sub Y, which equals the hypotenuse times. We're going to use sine because it's it's opposite. Uh, sine 20.0 degrees, which is approximately 5.0 four seven uh, meters and it's in the positive direction so that's uh, checked I really hope that you understand how I got this it's basically from here um, the x component of vector B is just uh, 12 no the x component of vector uh, B is just it's zero right here because it's not going uh, it's it's just straight up uh, not a degree tilted in either way or a fraction of a degree it's just 
uh, going to be zero meters. It's not going anywhere along the x direction, um, which would also mean that the y component of vector b is 12.0 meters. The x component of vector c uh, is adjacent to the angle, so you could just use the cosine. So you're going to use 13.0 meters um, cosine, I guess you don't have to write the meters, you, you already know that you're working with meters, 35.0 degrees, uh, which is approximately, now notice it's going in the negative direction, so it's negative 10.65 meters, and the y component of vector c is going to be 13 sine 35.0 degree, degrees, which I have uh, equated, uh, calculated to be uh, 7.46 meters on the calculator. Uh, notice it's negative, and then the x component of vector d um, equals uh, equals um, uh, 24.0 cosine of 50.0 degrees. I hope by now you understand how I, how I got that, which is 15.43 meters, and the y component is 24.0.0. .0. Point zero degrees, approximately negative 18.39. I hope you understand how I got the negative by now. And now we're ready to find the um, the x component of vector r. So again, the x component of vector r is the sum of all the x components. Okay, if you remember from up here. So let's just add them together. So you add up all the x components. Uh, that's why if you set it up in the style, it should be easy. I got negative 15.04 meters plus 0 meters plus negative 10.65 meters vector and then D 3 meters so you have A, B, C, D the X components of A, B, C, and D and that equals now first I want us to predict something I should have said this before I predict that the X component is going to be negative and the y component is going to be negative, assuming that you drew this fairly to scale. So I'm going to make a prediction that the x is going to be negative and the y is going to be negative. And indeed, we have negative 10.26 meters. I hat. Which means it's going in the x direction. Sometimes it's written as x hat. Okay, x hat. So uh, now let's find the y component of vector r, or the resultant, so that's this, the sum of all the y components, which is 5.47 meters, uh, plus 12.0 meters, plus negative 10.65 meters, oh, uh, 7 point, like I said, 7.46 meters, okay, that's 7.46 meters, um, Okay, that is 7.46 meters, plus minus 18.39 meters, uh, which equals, guess what, negative 8.38 meters j hat, or y hat, depending on the professor. And is that negative? And indeed, it is in the negative direction, so that corroborates our mathematics. Um, so now... Let's find the magnitude because even though that we got worked hard to get these, this isn't the answer. The uh, the answer to a is the magnitude, which we know from up there. Uh, the equation is going to be r x squared plus r sub y squared square root uh, equals. Um, so r x is negative ten point two six meters square. R y is negative 8.38 meters squared, which is approximately 175.49 meters squared, which is approximately 13.2 uh, vertical dash line 5 for significant figures, which is approximately 13.3 meters. And that is the magnitude. Now the angle. How do we find this angle? First find this angle and then add, uh, then add 180 degrees. Well, the angle, well, we have the x component and the y component now. I guess we could use, I surmise that we could use any trig function, but let's use tangent. Now, the tangent theta equals um, opposite 
over adjacent. And to find the, um, to find theta, we take the tan inverse of both sides. Uh, and we know that Ry is negative 8.38 meters, negative 10.26 meters. Uh, and if you do that on the calculator, uh, you get theta equals that. If you do that on the calculator, you get that theta is approximately 39.24 degrees and 39.24 degrees plus 180 degrees is approximately 219 degrees. Uh, that is the, that is the uh, answer, that's the direction. And I made it in one page for actually the, this is the third attempt doing this video. Uh, the other two sort of the video broke or something. <laughs> so I hope that you enjoy. Uh, thank you everyone. I'm not going to ask you to like or subscribe. You could if you want to. I am passionately doing these videos from my heart. I'm not calling any of my videos perfect or ideal, relatively speaking. Besides, this is merely a fraction of a fraction of a quarter percent of all the myriad of videos out there concerning this subject, including videos with more easy to understand animation and explanation. I'm simply one voice out of many. My passion is to help and teach others and have them succeed. And so this is a great way to implement this zeal while go, while gaining positive feedback from the community. So if there's any need for improvement or, or anything that I, that I didn't say right or, or skipped or omitted inadvertently, then please let me know. Uh, thank you very much for your time.